Here's another universe puzzle. This one's on energy. Energy. What is it? Can you solve the puzzle of energy? And we'll take a look at a handful of clues, beginning with the relationship of potential and kinetic energy. Now, hard to pinpoint this on just one physicist, but let's pick on Isaac Newton and the famous apple dropping from a tree. Now, when that apple is on the tree, it has potential energy based on its mass and based on its height and a constant called g. When it falls, it has kinetic energy based on its mass and its velocity. Now, since then, a number of different types of energy beyond just gravitational energy have been found to be conserved, meaning that energy can transfer forms, but it cannot be created or destroyed. It will be equal. For example, an automobile changes chemical energy, gasoline, into mechanical energy. A lamp changes electrical energy into light, and there's some excess heat as well. But you total everything up, and it should always be equal. And so some of these forms that have evolved uh, over the last four centuries, um, mechanical energy, chemical energy, uh, heat, uh, nuclear energy, uh, electrical and light, to name a few. And we'll show more examples of this um, in a few slides from now. But the key thing is that energy can change forms, but it's always perfectly conserved. Now let's fast forward to the last century. Famous equals MC squared, Einstein. But all matter is made of atoms, which are made of particles, which contain energy. And this is an important uh, equation. The energy of light. So matter has energy. Um, it might just be stored, but it still has energy, and so does light. Light, in this case, uh, referring to uh, EM waves, light just happens to be a certain frequency of EM, electromagnetic waves, that uh, in this particular case now, we'll show an example of the conservation of energy of matter, an electron, which is a particle, and its antiparticle, the positron, in what's called annihilation, where they disappear and create two gamma rays, which is an electromagnetic uh, wave, just a higher frequency than light. And the equation in this case is um, equals HF, H being a constant. And so the key here is its frequency, the frequency of that wave. So light has energy, and as is also shown, uh, matter can be uh, converted into light, or gamma ray in this case. And for the last clue, now let's remember that all forms are either particles or waves. And to illustrate this, we'll go through a few examples of the different forms of energy. But because all matter is made of atoms and particles, we can illustrate an example of, of gravity affecting a water wheel, which turns a turbine, and makes it useful mechanical energy. So how does this work? Let's break down that water that's being affected by gravity. And that water is H2O molecules, hydrogen and oxygen. And so let's just take one of those atoms being affected by gravity, supposedly gra gravitational waves. And then that causes the motion of that atom. And for mechanical energy, uh, atoms affecting other atoms. How so? Through electrical waves. So that'll force the motion of, of atoms into useful mechanical energy. So pretty simple, just the motion of atoms. Now that's gravitational and mechanical. Let's, let's take a look at a few more examples of energy and let's use light uh, or an electromagnetic wave. And light, remember, is just one frequency. Sunlight can affect uh, the growth of trees. Now, a tree might need other uh, sources of energy beyond just light, but light is an important one. And how does that work? Light has the ability to ha has energy, which has the ability to restructure the bonds and atoms, which can create new molecules. And so that's chemical energy, and, and thus uh, a tree can grow from sunlight, from the energy of the sun in particular. So light and chemical energy. And how about nuclear energy? Uh, nuclear energy is also within the atom. 
uh, but maybe instead of the restructuring of bonds uh, between the atoms, which is repositioning of electrons, it can also be the nucleus itself, which is made up of, of protons and neutrons. And so restructuring of that nucleus, becoming literally different atoms, can also cause uh, EM waves, probably at higher frequencies. And an EM wave can cause the vibration of atoms. And what is heat? Heat is the, uh, exactly that. It's the vibration of, of atoms. So nuclear energy, heat energy. Again, there are boxes drawn around all these because energy is always perfectly conserved. And let's take a look at one more example, electrical energy uh, and light. What is electrical energy? It's the flow of electrons well, in, a, in a wire pictured in this case, but how does that work? It's uh, electrons that may leave uh, one atom and, and move to the next, and it has a cascading effect, of course, on other atoms. And so how does that work between these atoms or, or these electrons? Uh, it's an electrical force, an electrical wave that forces uh, an electron. And, and ultimately that causes uh, light, um, that motion of those atoms, uh, sorry, electrons, uh, at, especially at different frequencies uh, that we see as visible light, can turn electrical energy into the light that we see coming from a lamp, for example. But in all these cases that I've shown here in clue number five, energy is always perfectly conserved. And we can also break down all matter uh, to be shown as either uh, atoms or, or their particles like the nucleus of, um, of an atom or electrons, like in this case, uh, electricity. And, and the other form is light. And furthermore, we've established that even light or EM waves um, can be perfectly conserved with matter as well. So knowing this, here's the question. What is energy?